select settings, go into the picture mode, we go into the screen settings, aspect ratio, 4x3 and now we can start the video. Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're checking out my DOS retro PC. I coined the term time machine. It's basically a combination of new and old. I want a authentic experience. So we have an authentic mainboard, processor, sound card and so on. But I also like modern conveniences. I want to use an optical mouse, a modern USB keyboard, being able to connect it with HDMI to a big screen TV and have an ATX case with an ATX power supply. So this is a big picture type of video. I will basically summarize what I've done the last 10 years or so in a single video. And this retro PC basically uh, combines all the knowledge that I've accumulated. And uh, it, is, uh, it has a very specific target. It is aimed at the time period where I grew up. So I will talk a little bit about that. And it has a specific focus, which is DOS gaming with a heavy focus on MIDI music and sound. So to put everything into context, my first computer was a 386 running at 33 megahertz. It was a Vobis high screen PC that was back in Austria. And yeah, it was around the time where I started to go to high school and I played games like Monkey Island 2, Wing Commander 2, Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. And those are the games that are really closest to my heart and uh, they give me that warm fuzzy feeling when I play them again. So that's where my passion comes from. I'm passionate also about Windows 98 and Windows XP and modern gaming. That's why I have all sorts of videos on the channel. But this is basically where it all started. Now we did have a Commodore 64 at home. Uh, my brother and me, we pulled together some money. He yeah, pulled more than me. I didn't have too much money at the time. Um, and yeah, that Home computer, fantastic, especially the SID music, but the games, they never really quite resonated with me. I found them extremely hard. They followed the principle of uh, easy to learn, hard to master. I never basically finished any of the games. They were just too hard. Um, I was more about the story. So when adventure games came out on the PC, that was my uh, time. And yeah, that's basically where my passion for this computer comes from. Okay, so here is the PC. It's a case from Gigabyte. I'm not quite sure what the exact model number is. And yeah, I had to pick a slightly older case because I needed some drive base and most modern cases don't have a lot of drive base anymore. At the front, we have a drive bay for three and a half and two and a half inch drives. I'm using a SATA SSD with 60 gigabytes and internally there's a SATA to ID converter. So this works really well. I can just eject it, plug it in through a USB adapter to my modern computer and load some games. We have an optical drive. The main criteria for me was that it works and that it has CD analog audio at the back. Of course, the GoTek floppy emulator to boot from floppy disks and install MS-DOS. A lot of these ports are not connected. For example, the USB and the audio ports, they are not connected. We've got the power button, the power LED and also the hard drive activity LED. Here goes the power. We have two PS2 ports, but I'm using modern uh, USB input devices. Two serial, a parallel port and here's a 120 millimeter cooling fan. And here we have all the expansion cards. I will go into more detail once we open the machine and take a closer look. We've got the graphics card here and I'm using a DVI to HDMI dongle. Makes it easy to capture and connect to a large screen TV. These are the audio output ports from the optical drive. I routed a cable for easy external mixing. A MIDI interface, uh, the, one of the main purposes of this machine is to experience MIDI. So I've got a Roland MIDI interface card and here we have a sound blaster. Here we can see the drives from the inside. We've got the ID to SATA adapter, jumper to master and the optical drive to slave. I'm just using a single ID ribbon cable, keeps it nice and neat. And down here we've got the GoTech floppy emulator. The case came with a basic power supply. It's ATX, so in the future it's easy to replace and the machine does not consume a lot of power. And here we have the inside. It is a Socket 7 mainboard, of course. Those of you who have been following me for a while, you know my love for Socket 7. And together with a Pentium MMX, this is, in my opinion, one of the most flexible 
options for a DOS gaming PC. The Socket 7 platform together with the Pentium MMX is hands down the best platform I can recommend to you for a DOS time machine. A while ago we did a video on the 136 in 1 Pentium MMX project and this is the main reason why I switched from an AMD K6 which I used for a while to the Pentium MMX. Not only can we disable the mainboard and the CPU cache to slow down the processor, it has some uh, hidden flags, for example, data cache, code cache, branch prediction and V pipeline. And we can toggle those uh, CPU features to really fine tune the speed of this processor. And you can print out one of those sheets, run all the benchmarks. I'm gonna refer to our DOS bench project. Uh, you just press a few keys, it runs some benchmarks and outputs some numbers and you can fill in this uh, form, print it out and then we've got some batch files like fastest, fast, medium high, medium, medium slow, slow and slowest to really have the best compatibility with speed sensitive games. But if you want to play something like System Shock uh, which is more demanding or another 3D DOS game, Doom 2 for example, then you can switch the machine into a faster mode. And then if you go back to want to play uh, Space Quest 1 or Test Drive 3, these games are speed sensitive. Wing Commander 2 for example, you uh, run the slowest batch file and the machine is configured to be much slower and the games will run at the perfect speed. With the RAM, you want to have a low capacity. The lower the better. You don't need 32 or 64 megabytes of RAM for MS-DOS. In fact, some games actually will have issues with this much RAM. So go for the smallest memory module you can find. There are many options with the graphics. I decided to go with a NVIDIA GeForce FX 5200. And you might be surprised by this. Why am I not using an S3 uh, Trio video card? or something that's a little bit uh, more well known to be a good DOS graphics card. Well, uh, in general, I find um, a lot of information out there, I wouldn't say misleading, but um, in the retro community, people tend to focus on the few games that don't work and then discount or rule out a lot of really good video cards. And yeah, maybe Commander Keen and a few other games uh, don't scroll properly in this graphics card. Those are not games I play. Uh, all the stuff that I'm interested in works really fine on this video card. And the NVIDIA uh, graphics card has a real highlight and that is the scaler. So I'm using a DVI to HDMI dongle and it scales everything to 1080p. That means you can use modern capture cards. You don't need to use an exotic uh, capture card to capture a VGA, just straight into HDMI and it doesn't matter if it's the game, the bio screen, text mode, uh, Windows, everything gets scaled to 1080p so it's really easy for capturing which is very important for me because of the YouTube channel. The way games look and sound is very important to me and also a bit of a story. Um, I believe it was in the time period where I transitioned from primary school to high school. There was one summer and I worked at a building site and the money yeah, I spent it on my first sound card. This here, this is the Creative Labs Sound Blaster. And back, back at those days, we didn't have the internet. All my knowledge came from PC magazines and they recommended to buy Sound Blaster because it combined AdLib compatibility together with Sound Blaster for sound, digital sound effects as well as having a game port. So um, yeah, that was my very first sound card. And when I installed it, wow. Uh, the difference was just huge compared to the uh, PC speaker and I replayed all the games that I uh, was used to just to experience it again with the Sound Blaster. And that's why my passion for Creative Labs comes from. I know there are really good sound cards, ESS, Yamaha, and they might sound uh, cleaner and neater, less background noise or whatever, but they just don't give me that warm and fuzzy nostalgic feeling. So for me, it has to be a Creative Labs Sound Blaster. Like I mentioned earlier, games with a Sound Blaster, they just sound so much better compared to using the built-in PC speaker. But when I uh, used these games, they had like setup menus or uh, command line parameters to change the sound configurations. I kept coming across Roland MT32 and I had no idea what that means. Um, all the information back then came from magazines. You couldn't really borrow one. None of my friends had a Roland, whatever that was, and I could not never uh, listen to it and compare it. So um, that's really where this 
yeah, you can call it obsession or desire to have the best uh, comes from. And yeah, now we are older, we have a little bit more money, we can f afford the toys that we couldn't back in the day. So that's why this machine has a focus on MIDI because I missed out back in the days and I wanna play these games with the, the best music and the best sound available. And here we have all the audio stuff. So we've got a cable coming from the optical disk drive. This is the CD analog audio and that goes into a RCA bracket at the back of the case. Here we have the Roland MPU401 MIDI interface. We've got the Sound Blaster. I'm using the Sound Blaster AWE64 Gold and I've routed the PC speaker also onto the sound card. There's a, a DOS mixer utility where I can uh, mute the PC speaker depending on if I need it or not. Just to touch on the AW64 Gold, it doesn't have an authentic OPL3. So those older games, well, what sound card would I pick if I had to build a computer and play uh, games without MIDI? It would be either the good old Sound Blaster. Yeah, so let's say a 386SX. Um, I would pick the original Sound Blaster, but something a little bit faster. I would go for the Sound Blaster Pro 2. This one has the OPL3. It can do stereo and quite a few games actually support, support this card natively and will give you slightly better sound. So MIDI is a huge focus of this computer. Let's talk about the Roland MT32. Uh, I got this unit in 2004. I was living in Leicester in the UK at the time. Bought it off eBay together with a MIDI interface card and no one really was interested in these sort of devices back in those days, so prices were pretty good. Later in 2010, I already moved to Australia. I just went all out. I said to myself, Phil, you only live once, and um, so yeah, just go for it. And I went on a shopping spree in Japan. I didn't buy on eBay because prices, firstly, prices were high, and uh, people had already caught on that these are for the retro community so prices were high and stock availability was really bad but in japan they were everywhere uh, easy to find and prices were also good so i bought a ton of these midi modules big package with uh, ems freight uh, arrived in australia and yeah i still have all these devices these are the two units that i use uh, the most we have the cm32l this is basically like an mt32 but with some additional sound effects, which quite a few games use. So if you don't have that, your games will, yeah, not play those sound effects and sound a little bit void. And of course, the good old Roland Sound Canvas. I did have one back in the day, the Wavetable version. And also I wanna say, people get upset about, you know, everyone using Roland, is Roland the best? And well, the, the, the simple fact is Roland is not the best, but, it was the de facto standard. So all the games uh, developers, the musicians used Roland sound canvases to compose and, and, and mix and arrange their music. And that's why games sound most natural and most balanced on Roland sound devices. And again, you can buy whatever you want. For me, uh, Creative Labs and Roland is just the way to go with retro PC gaming. And I use an external audio mixer to connect all the outputs from the computer into this mixer and then I can adjust the uh, volumes to make everything nice and balanced. So this is a four channel stereo mixer. It's a Phonic AM240 and yeah, really good investment. It's got a lot of dials and buttons and you need to invest in a lot of cables and it will turn a little bit into cable spaghetti, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. Um, I like the convenience of being able to adjust the CD audio volume, the speech with the MIDI music externally without having to quit the game and then uh, launch the mixer software of the sound card. Also the quality is a little bit better. This is a much better mixer than what you find integrated on the sound cards. Let's have a look at this DOS PC. So here we are in the BIOS and that's one of the benefits of using the NVIDIA GeForce. We can use a DVI to HDMI dongle, 1080p into the TV and then just go into the options, change the aspect ratio to four by three, and you've got a pretty decent uh, signal. Also very good for running a YouTube channel, uh, makes it easy to capture footage out of the machine. I know a lot of you out there are chasing the perfect image. Um, to me, the, perfect, the quality has to be sufficient, and in the end of the day, you've got to produce the video and get it out the door. That's more important in my opinion. Next up, we've got 
the boot menu. Um, I call this the MS-DOS starter pack. You can download it from our website and it just sets everything up nice and easy. Um, this is because we're using a USB keyboard. Sometimes it just glitches out and when you restart the machine, it gets stuck at the last key. So the MS-DOS starter menu, you can choose between conventional memory, extended memory and expanded memory, as well as do I need an optical drive or not. It just covers all the bases. And now it depends which game I'm gonna run. Let's say I'm running something speed sensitive. I type in slowest and you can see here set mal with the parameters. It slows everything down. The CPU cache is disabled. All these options are disabled. And we're getting now the equivalent of a 486 machine. If that is too fast, I can go into the BIOS, reboot the machine. Also turn off the motherboard cache. And then I have the equivalent of a 386. And once you're down to the speed of a 386, pretty much any speed sensitive game will run. Unless you go back further to the original PC, XT, that sort of uh, games, uh, they will be too fast on this computer. But I'm interested in the 386 era. That's where I grew up. And those are the games I wanna play on this machine. And then you can play your favorite DOS game. And that's pretty much it for this video. So we went over the hardware, the reasons why I put, this, uh, put together this machine. We branched out to a couple of other projects like the 136-in-1 uh, CPU project as well as the MS-DOS starter pack. And I also explained why I chose certain music and MIDI devices. And now I wanna hear from you. What is your DOS retro PC like? Uh, what era did you grow up with? And what, what, what are your most favorite games? What sound card, what video card? What is your choice? I wanna hear from you as well. So, um, and that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed it and happy to share stuff about me. I really enjoy stepping in front of the camera. A uh, bit weird at first, but yeah, it's a, it's a good thing. This is me and this is what I do. So yeah, thanks for watching and I shall see you soon in another one.